Welcome back to Attacking Third, match day 13 in the NWSL and Pride Month celebrations continue at CPKC Stadium. Friday night as Kansas City Current hosts the Chicago Red Stars and then Saturday action Louisville hosting Gotham FC, North Carolina taking on Orlando Pride and Washington Spirit. Uh, hosting San Diego Wave. Houston Dash also celebrating Pride Night as they host Angel City. And two matches on Sunday, Bay FC taking on Utah Royals. The two expansion sides going at it head to head. And Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern on CBS, the Cascadia rivalry. Seattle Reign against Portland Thorns. The 40th meeting between these two sides, all competitions, a new league record. The Thorns coming off three straight wins, including a 4-0 win over Seattle Reign themselves on May 11th. However, this match is going to look different for the Portland Thorns because they are without forward Sophia Smith. She picked up two yellow cards, um, which led to a red card suspension in the Thorns' last match against North Carolina Courage. So no Smith for this match. How much of a miss is that for the Thorns? It's a massive miss. She is <laughs> a, the centerpiece of this team. She is an elite striker. Her movement off the ball, her pace, her, her ability to drive at defenders on the ball. Uh, she just brings that massive fear factor that, that you cannot replace. I do, however, think that the, this Portland team is probably good enough to still beat Seattle, who are pretty poor right now. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're going to miss her for a game, I know this is the Cascadia Derby, but against this team, it, it, Seattle just have not been good. So what does Seattle need to do to take advantage of this absence? Well, you don't have to worry about the pace of, of Sophia Smith quite as much. So I, it, it's... It, you maybe can play a little bit of a higher line, try to press a little bit higher and win the ball higher up the pitch to, to create more opportunities. But uh, Portland still have a lot of options to, mm -hmm. to play with. Uh, Morgan Weaver's a player who can really, really hurt you. Uh, they still have a lot of quality around the pitch, but it, it's going to take a big match still from Seattle to, to get a result, I think. Who do you need to see step up for Portland in Smith's absence, Darian? I think Olivia Moultrie can step up and hold the ball up in that nine position. We've seen her play across the front line, and I think it's been really effective, granted, with Sophia Smith in there because I think they're two kind of opposite players that ask different things of their opponent. But for me, she can go in, she can play ball, she can hold up well, she has a brilliant shot. Portland needs to have an identity without Sophia Smith, so I actually kind of like this challenge for them. Coach Rob Gale has spoke in depth about how we don't want Sophia Smith to be our only attack. We don't want everything to revolve around her. So using advantages of Sinclair, of Janine Becky, of Moultrie, and a plethora of the other attackers, it'll be a good challenge for them. Uh, Seattle is not the best team in the league right now, yeah. but with Haidema back, I do think Seattle has a chance to maybe put some away because I think they really missed her in the buildup, her strength, her ability to get on the end of crosses yeah. through two set goals last game, set pieces well. will be really, really big for them. Four straight losses for Seattle. They're on definitely a bit of a skid. This is an opportunity for them. And in, in the first Cascadia rivalry of the season, Laura Harvey talked about how she was teaching the team, hey, this is the rivalry. This is what we <laughs> play for. It didn't work out for them. They lost by four goals and they didn't yeah, get one in. Rough. It, does the mentality of this match change, do you think, for Seattle? A hundred percent. I mean, I played for Seattle, and this, I think back in that day, I mean, I'm talking like it was 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> back was in like, that day. It was like four years ago. <laughs> uh, but when I played for Seattle, that it was much more of a big deal. I think because the league is so much more diverse, there's so much competition everywhere, this isn't the only matchup that, you know, it is going to be the most difficult. So I think it's lost a bit of its oomph that it used mm -hmm. to have. I think especially because of the last game you left going down four goals, you have to come in and have a little bit more bite tactically on the field that makes sense and not just the energy and the heart behind it because Portland's a stacked technical yeah, team. Awesome. You have to come out, you have to play. It's not just going to be based on physicality and who has more grit. You have to be clean on the ball and execute your game plans. I don't think we've seen that really from Seattle yet. Hopefully they can do it in this game along with that heart and fight that Laura Harvey brings. Seattle, Seattle at home hosting the Portland Thorns and a, a storied rivalry across the NWSL. But Dee, as you mentioned, the, the league is growing. There are more rivalries, mm -hmm. including two expansion sides that oh go head-to-head -head for the first time. <laughs> Bay FC taking on Utah Royals. This Royals side, they've struggled. They uh, have lost 10 of their 12 matches. However, Utah is coming off of a a not so bad performance last weekend, Darian. How does Utah build on what we saw last week? 
they can build by keep creating those opportunities that aren't just through Ali Sentinel. I think we saw Utah in the middle to attacking third show a little bit more variety. Paige Monahan looked dangerous. Sentinel looked dangerous. Um, we just need to see more from them. Get Amandine Henri more on the ball. She's a leader in her own right. Just her presence on the pitch, I think, elevates this team. But they need her to be more integrated into how they're trying to mm -hmm. play. I think that's what Utah's really been struggling with is how are you trying to play? Yeah. I don't know if what is the identity. Yeah I, yeah, I don't know if they can answer it. And if they can, we really need to see it. But finishing those opportunities that they create and then really simple marking in the box defensively, their shape in the back line. It's where they were getting exploited last game, like really easy slip passes that are just a two step adjustment, moving your feet a little bit quicker very fixable things that I think they can build on and I hope we see it in this match against Bay because you have a front line who is starting to heat up again and if they're consistent and building on what they had last game it's going to be a tough game for Utah's back line against Bay. Yeah I, this this Utah team is, is in a tough situation because they, they don't have an identity they don't really have a, they're they're not a team that just sits back necessarily they're not a team that plays in possession they haven't figured out who they are yet they don't necessarily I think have the pieces to quite figure out who they are yet or the quality to fully figure it out. And, and I think that this this Bay team, even though they haven't, they're not in the greatest form, they're a better team than Utah. They, they have started to figure out who they are and how they want to play. And especially playing at home uh, against a, a fellow expansion team, I think this crowd will be behind them. Yeah. Uh, they will have taken some, some confidence from their last match in, in, in beating Chicago. So I, I think that the the ball is firmly in Bay's court, and I, I, I give them a pretty strong favorability to win this one. We often judge teams and kind of assess their quality based on their competition they're going up against, right? Like, and now we yeah. get to see two expansion sides go against each other. Yeah. How much are you thinking you're going to learn from either of these sides, knowing that they're going up against a, a team that is also brand new this year in the league? I think we'll learn a lot based on we've seen Bay put together a defensive shape Clearly one week, one other week they're working on their attacking shape. Another week they're toying with two sixes, maybe a one six. Like Kiki Pickett, you go on the six. We're seeing it slowly come together. And so then to go against a rival where you don't really know what they're going to put out. We're, we're not sure. I don't know if Utah's that sure of what they're going to put out yet going into this game. Um, it'll be a really good test because you also have to adapt in a game because it's going to ask different questions of you because it's going to be very unexpected. Players going against each other with different tendencies. There's a lot of young players that have never played against an opponent they're about to play against. So I, I really like this. I think it'll be a mark of a good rivalry between mm -hmm. these two, but it's going to be a bit of a free-for-all, in my opinion. Yeah. Truly set the tone for what is to come from these expansion sides. Yeah, I, I think what we see on one side is Bay are, are forging towards an identity, and, and on the other side, Utah are just searching around for one. They still haven't found it yet. I yeah. wish that they would just pick, even if it's sitting in a low, right. at least Chicago, yeah. I, I hate the way they, I don't like the way Chicago plays. I think they have quality to play better as Utah, but I think if Utah chose, let's sit in a low block and we're going to counter, that's going to be our thing. We're going to go down the wide channels. We're going to counter on teams. We're going to try to possess, get set pieces. We're going to try to focus on that. There's nothing that I can pick from a game where it's not just let's go no, through Rally Center. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing confident that translates over from match to yeah, match. Not we'll yet. See. Utah and Bay, they take each other on this weekend. As Washington Spirit hosts San Diego Wave, both of these sides at very different points in their season. Washington on a four game win streak, San Diego four match losing streak. For Washington Spirit, they're coming off a narrow 1 0 win over Utah Royals last weekend. What do you want to see, Darian, from Washington's attack to get the job done against San Diego? We need them to finish those chances. It's not as if they didn't create any. That would be more of an issue. They had so many. There was, you know, easy tap ins at times. There was better balls that could have been played in, shots that could have been finished. I mean, granted, Maddie Hot had some great saves, six saves in the last three matches. She's had to come up big. But I think we just need them to be a little bit more clinical in front of goal because they have, I mean, one of the best quality attacking teams in the league by far. So if they're able to put away those chances, they can blow teams out. But we're seeing goalkeepers really step up this yeah. season, not just Jane Campbell for Houston. <laughs> so I, I'm here <laughs> for it. She, she's still having to do it, unfortunately. All credit to her because she's coming up with massive saves. But um, yeah, they just need to put their chances away.
Meanwhile, for San Diego, a correction, they're on a four-match winless streak. They have yeah. picked up draws and some points along the way, but what's the next step, Aaron, for Casey Stoney's side? Yeah, they kind of need to rediscover their identity. They're, they're not scoring goals, three goals in their last four matches. They've conceded 10 in their last 11, which is really pretty solid, second best in the league. So they're, 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 they're defending well, but they're not really – I think Jaden Charles' form has been a little bit, bit – uh, difficult this year. Uh, obviously, she suffered a little bit of an injury. They they really haven't clicked together offensively. I think mainly because of the, the injury issues they've had. They haven't really had their their first choice unit playing together throughout the season. But I think this is the type of match where where they they need to have their their entire attack really mm -hmm. really click. And, and we need to see that for them to, to really succeed. It does look like. Players are on different pages in the yeah. attack. A lot of islands, runs, and passes are kind of missing each other. Or there's just a lag in time almost. A player, though, that I think has been stellar for San Diego is Danny Colaprico. I actually want to do a little tactical it. breakdown on yeah, her yeah. one day. But she does a lot of the dirty work. I think she maintains possession well. She puts balls forward. She's able to break lines um, and wins a lot in the middle defensively yeah. for them. So for me, she's a player that can be key to possibly getting a win against Washington. Yeah, we'll see. It'll be a really Identical tough matchup. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, both. You did Vanessa DiBernardo today as your tactical for the <laughs> Chicago I Red Stars. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> you just see the unseen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're something. Well, we'll see. Dan Colaprico, definitely a player to watch this weekend as San Diego travels to our nation's capital to take on Washington, D.C. But across CBS platforms, we have a weekend of great sports coming up for you. A massive Sunday in the NWSL for Match Day 13. Up first, the Cascadia rivalry is back as the struggling Seattle Reign look to snap their losing streak against eternal rivals Portland Thorns on CBS. Coverage starts at 3.30 p.m. Eastern on the Galazzo Network. Then at 10 p.m., it's a battle of the expansion sides. Bay FC hosting Utah Royals at PayPal Park. Kickoff is at 10 p.m. Eastern on CBS Sports Network. Plenty of fun, entertaining football to come this weekend around the NWSL. 